Hello everyone and thank you for watching this video. My name is Michael D'Angelo and this is my PASIC 2012 proposal, Click Theory, freeing yourself from the metronome and solidifying your internal clock. We've all heard the mantra, especially as drummers, if you want good time, you need to practice with a metronome. And while it's a very simple statement, I think it's easier said than done. In my experience with conversations with my peers and teaching a handful of private students as being a student of myself, I've always found out that using the metronome isn't a guarantee that when you're outside of the practice room and on the bandstand that you're going to have great time. I started thinking about this concept and I started working on examples and exercises to help me facilitate time. And I started thinking about why we listen to music in the first place. If you think about all forms of Western music, whether it be rock, pop, R&B, hip hop, jazz, even some forms of classical music, all this music has a pulse that every human being can relate to. It's danceable. It moves us. And this pulse usually is facilitated by the metronome in the practice room. But this is where I think the discrepancy lies. Our feeling is internal. Our pulse is internal. Especially as drummers, we're so kinetic and we move that we're now kind of giving that role to the metronome, which is an external source. So in a way, the metronome is actually doing the job of feeling the time in ourselves. It's doing that job on its own. And I think sometimes when you practice, when musicians practice, they make these subconscious micro adjustments to the metronome. If you think about two dance partners, they should move together, not one person dragging the other along. And I think it works the same with the metronome. You need to be in kind of a, a swaying motion with the metronome instead of it dragging you along. So I started thinking about ways to take the internal pulse and separate it from the external click of the metronome. And I've developed a lot of exercises and cool methods to facilitate improving our internal pulse while having the metronome not just be somebody that drags us along, but somebody that kind of checks our work and helps us along. In my studies at the University of North Texas with Ed Sof, he always had a great concept for learning new techniques. He said, always practice with something that is easy to play or familiar to you so that you can gain the new concept. So you're not really worrying about playing it right, you're worried about absorbing the new concept. So these exercises are really easy, they're really fun, and I hope they give you some new ways to practice and uh, all while making you a better musician. So let's get started. So preliminary exercises. Uh, these are just very, very basic hand exercises to get our hands and our minds comfortable with these new exercises. In the description of this video, you'll actually find a PDF download link uh, to the handout for this topic. So when I start talking about metronome systems and all these crazy topics that you'll be able to follow along. So I encourage you to uh, click on the download link and uh, check it out. So this first exercise is, um, I like to use it as a warm up, it gets my brain going, gets my hands going. And it's uh, a simple measure of 4-4 time, all 16th notes with two beats of singles and two beats of doubles. And I like to apply metronome systems to these various exercises. And it's basically putting the metronome on different parts of the beat. And this is where we separate the internal pulse from the external click. Now when you do all these exercises, you need to keep in mind that your internal pulse always needs to be the actual pulse of the music. Don't let the metronome convince you to move your head into thinking that the and is actually one. That's why I like this exercise, because singles and doubles always forces your mind to start something new. You really can't go on autopilot. So, of course, it wouldn't go without saying that if you couldn't do this with the click on the downbeat as our pulse, then it would be very difficult to start moving the metronome around. So, metronome system one is the downbeat. So, this is 80 BPM. It's a measure of um, singles and doubles. Three, four. Pretty simple. 
So when that is comfortable, your mind's comfortable, your hands are comfortable, then you'll move on to system number two, which is now you're gonna put the click on the ands of the beat. So, sounds something like this. One, two, three, Easy enough. Now it gets a little tricky because now we're gonna put the click on something that isn't the downbeat and it isn't the subdivision of the beat. It's gonna be on the E's and the U's. So you can pick which one you wanna start with. So here are the E's. One, two, three, four. Pretty tricky. Now, when you do these, remember that your internal pulse has to stay on the downbeat, and always make sure that since you are playing a note that will line up with the click, make sure that you're really locking in with the click. So you're kind of thinking about two things at once, but that's the challenge of the exercise. So here are the uhs. One, two, three, four. Pretty simple. And the last step, you're actually going to activate uh, your eighth note function on the metronome. Uh, it's easier just to double the tempo, so now we're going to 160. And this is going to be the E and the uh. One, two, three. to get your brain moving for a while. If you want more things to practice with the preliminary exercises on the snare drum, uh, check out the first couple pages of stick control, the single beat combinations. Uh, make the eighth notes, sixteenth notes, like in cut time, and do all the metronome systems with all the different hand combinations in there. Being a jazz drummer at heart, I haven't forgotten about all you jazzers out there, so in the preliminary exercises section, you'll find a new set of metronome systems for triplet bass rhythms, like swung eights. And this exercise is a measure of triplets and a measure of swung eights, or the first and third partials of the triplet. So the first metronome system is on the downbeat, like in the duple systems. So this is at 96. One, two, three. The second system is on the third partial of the triplet, so like the swung eighth. But remember to always feel the pulse on the downbeat. One, two, three. And last but not least, number three is the second partial of the triplet. I will admit this one's a little tricky because in swung music like jazz, uh, you'll never really have anything line up on the second partial of the triplet. So when you do some of the exercises, uh, it's a little tricky because you'll never line up with the metronome. So here's the second partial of the triplet. One, two, three, four. So now it's time to apply things to the drum set, and this is where it gets really fun. Um, 
you can take the same metronome systems as the duple and the triple hand exercises uh, and apply them to grooves and exercises on the drum set. So for the duple systems, uh, I like to use uh, one of the basic grooves out of the David Garibaldi Future Sounds book, uh, which is just a paradiddle split between the hands and four on the floor on the bass drum. So I'll demonstrate the five duple metronome systems with the paradiddle groove. This is at quarter equals 100. Now, for the triplet based exercises, uh, it's really, really fun and uh, a good brain melting exercise to uh, practice syncopation. Uh, you can do it with the hands only or do it in the context of swing jazz time. So I'll demonstrate the second system, which is the third partial of the triplet at 100. So now that we've had fun with the first set of exercises, now it's time to take things to another level. If you look at the first set of metronome settings closely, you'll realize that it's just a quarter note, the same uh, as I like to call pulse width as the click in our internal pulse. The click is just displaced to every part of the beat. But now we're going to kind of change things up a little bit, and now we're going to deal with two different time signatures at once. And it's easier than it sounds, I promise. I started thinking about this concept when I was uh, studying the drumming of Ari Honig and his concepts of metric modulation, and especially after buying his book Intro to Polyrhythms, Contracting and Expanding Time Within Form, really started getting me to think about how could I practice hearing two different time signatures at once while having an internal pulse while having a completely different time going on around me. That's what happens when, uh, and especially in a jazz setting, when you modulate or superimpose a different time signature on top of another. If you don't have your internal pulse strong, there's no way that you can superimpose a different time signature. So these exercises will really help you solidify your internal time and also do some rhythmic trickery when the music calls for it. So we're going to use the same hand exercises with the duple metronome settings and the triple metronome settings with these new advanced metronome settings. Okay, so now I'm going to demonstrate a couple of the advanced metronome settings. Uh, for time, I won't do them all, but make sure to check out the PDF handout download in the description to, uh, to get the handout and follow along. So in the duple category, we'll use the same hand exercises as before uh, to demonstrate the advanced metronome settings. So the first one is every third eighth note. So this is uh, 70. One, two, three. Pretty simple. 
Now we're going to bump it up to every third sixteenth. So this is about 128. One, two, three, four. And last but not least of the duple is every fifth sixteenth. So here it is in 92. One, two, three, four. A couple of things about the advanced metronome settings. Notice I'm not starting and stopping them right when the metronome and the pulse downbeat land on one. It kind of helps the cause when you can just start and stop them randomly within each other. And I will admit it's tricky to get in and out of these, uh, especially when you start the metronome, you have to really think about how the click relates to the internal pulse, but over time you'll be able to hear it and internalize it and it comes pretty quick. Also make sure to check out the triplet advanced metronome settings as well. Of course you can do all the advanced metronome settings uh, to the same grooves as well. So uh, I'll just demonstrate a couple of the duple ones with the paired of a groove. So here's every third sixteenth at 140. And then every fifth sixteenth. Okay, so you've done the preliminary exercises, you've done the drum set exercises, you've done the advanced metronome settings, and you still want more, huh? Well, I got something for you. So there's a little bit of math involved in this, but it makes a whole lot of sense. Now we're going to play odd meter grooves on the drum set while keeping the metronome in 4-4 time. And it actually makes a lot of sense mathematically. If you have eight measures of 7-8 time, compared to seven measures of 4-4 four, four time, if you kind of multiply the numerators of the time signatures, seven times eight, and then eight, 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 which is 4-4, four, four, uh, eight times seven, it's the same number. So my point is you can play eight measures of any odd meter in 4-4 four, four time on the metronome, and it will always land on beat one. Don't believe me? Check it out. Pretty cool, huh? So after all is said and done, I think the very last step for you is to improvise using the various metronome settings. Uh, I think it's a very healthy exercise to challenge your internal time feel, and you kind of define the challenge of the exercise depending on how complex you want to get. So uh, I'm going to leave you with me improvising over the first advanced metronome system, which is every third eighth note. Um, I thank you so much for watching this video. 
Uh, it's been a pleasure to present these concepts to you. And uh, take care and have fun.